So our topic is how to become a successful Vaidya. Generally, while uh, uh, these sort of sessions are generally conducted with this management schools or uh, business schools and everything. And interestingly, when I just started looking for the, my previous slides in this regard, it was quite interesting to note that since 2014, I have given six or seven presentations of the same title or somewhat very related titles. So I think there is a need. I think there is some sort of a uh, inquiry always for uh, these sort of classes, I think. I do not know what could be the reason. That is what we are going to explore. Generally, success is a very uh, non-specific term, as everybody knows, because it has got many hues of meaning. What success really means. It, it can be very subjective as far as its definition is also concerned. So we will find what are the meanings of success as a Vaidya. There are many, many avenues for success, but we will confine it to the success as a Vaidya. What, what do you mean when you say that I want success? Is it abundance of money or abundance of fame or uh, crowded number of patients in your OP? So there are many doubts about it. And uh, if you go through the classical reference or definition of success, it can be an accomplishment of an aim or purpose, the attainment of fame, wealth or uh, social status. Or it can be a person, success can be person or thing that achieves desired aims or attains fame, wealth, etc. So in short, success is in the manner you define it. That is the most important thing. So first of all, when a Vaidya is asking for the secrets of success, actually the basic question is, what is your aim? What do you aim at? For any sort of issues where you seek success, the basic thing that you have to go for is a SWOT analysis. Actually, I'm presenting this something like a business presentation or a promotion presentation. But interestingly, all these things are given very clearly in one way or the other in our textbooks, in the classics. So even short analysis, you can find these concepts very well explained in our textbooks. SWOT analysis, everybody, I hope everybody will be knowing what a SWOT analysis is. It is about an analysis made regarding the possibility of success and the effort that you have to put to succeed. You have to assess SWOT, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat. As this slide really uh, very clearly exhibit, the strength and opportunities are the helpful traits whereas weakness and threats are the harmful traits. The strengths and weaknesses are the internal traits, whereas opportunities and threats are external traits. So we will see for success at individual levels, what all tips can be helpful as far as Vaidya is concerned. Please note what I have written at the last line. A teacher can buy a ticket for you but you have to travel. It is a sense saying. Fine. Define first. What is your plan? There are many options just by naming Vaidya alone. There are other options. Yes, number one, be a Vaidya. Number two, be a specialist Vaidya. We will see something about the advantages and uh, challenges of a specialist Vaidya. Be a teacher, be a researcher, be a public health expert. I have put it in red because that is gaining more and more momentum in the present scenario of the global pandemic. Then be a manufacturer, be a holistic practitioner or mind body healer. Get engaged with 
the tourism industry or the spa industry, which is also a very common thing these days. In any case, in any case, I think once you have made your mind, let me tell you, I have kept most of the options which I have listed earlier aside because the presentation, the lecture, the session today is focusing base, basically how to be successful as a Vaidya. So my presentation will be focusing more on how to su be successful as a Vaidya. The mantras are very simple. Number one, be it and becoming it. Be it and become it. Then get firm footings in the basics. No doubt, get very firm footings in the basics. When you go through the textbooks, you can find n number of situations where this idea is given again and again repeatedly so stick on to the basics organize and interconnect what we learn this is one point which we lack which we miss we learn lots of things by which we gather lots of information but please understand that information is not becoming knowledge as long as it is not put into practice. Information most often creates panic, whereas knowledge gives you peace of mind and confidence. So only when you interconnect what we learn and put them into practice, the information will be translated into knowledge and by repeated knowledge, that means repeated practice, your knowledge is becoming the awareness, the wisdom, and that is what you are supposed to. So learn continuously. That way Pamba is doing a wonderful job with this 150 lectures uninterruptedly. So then while learning, my simple suggestion, what I have learned from my personal experience, I'm sharing with you, learn one text thoroughly. Generally, we tend to run after information and we run, we tend to run after textbooks. That is the way in which we learn in our undergraduate classes because we, we will be collecting information from various sources, various sources. For example, if a, a, a student is asked to or supposed to learn about Amam, he will be collecting 20 references about Amam from various sources, various textbooks. But interestingly, that boy or girl, whoever it is, will not be understanding what Amam is. But he may have 15 or 20 quotations related with Amam. That is the biggest tragedy that what we are, we are facing in our present education system. Our project, present educational system itself is the biggest challenge which prevents you from becoming successful. So learn one text as your Swadhyaya Grandham from the beginning to the end thoroughly. And apply everything what you learn in real life situations learning should be continuous and be disciplined with it never stop learning i always used to remind my students that a vaidya is not working he is practicing there is a big difference between work and practice work when you finish one work it is finished but practice is for doing the thing in a better way tomorrow. It is not work. It is not going to be finished. You have one program at the end of this year, December 31st on the New Year Eve. Fine. You start practicing every day. You are the member of a team of a drama. So you're practicing every day because you have a name that on the eve of December 31st, you will have a stage and you have 
to put the best on the stage so you practice every day every day tomorrow you should do the things in a better way than today next week you should perform better than this week similarly while practicing vaidyam every day we should improve every day we should improve you should not be the same vaidya today when compared with what you were yesterday you should not be the same vaidya in the month of september when compared with what you were in the month of august so learn continuously disciplined uninterruptedly and as a basic you may fly everywhere no issue but you should have a firm footing in one authentic textbook that is which is known as your swadhyaya grantha and the learning ideally should start from the formative years itself why during your studentship itself but for those who are going to start late i would say better late than never so if you can start tomorrow start learning one text book from top to bottom from beginning to end never say die start it tomorrow and always try to learn from a mentor because you all know while explaining the qualities of a vaidya daksha tirthata shastrartha tirtha means gurumukham gurumukham in practice it is not about passing the examination it is not about expressing your ideas in the answer sheet but there are n number of improvisations of applications n number of branching and offshooting for what you learn from the textbooks no guide can give you the exact picture of how things are put into practice in a real life situation so always learn from a mentor shastram gurumukhodgirnam no doubt at all so you have to be guru para you have to be guru para no other option so if you don't have one find one immediately be pure in your intentions be pure as pure as possible in your intentions dakshas tirthatta shastrartho drishta karma shuchi bhishak should be suji and that suchitvam you have to keep in three major spheres number 1 jnana shuddhi number 2 karma shuddhi and number 3 dravya shuddhi dravya shuddhi is not the aushadha shuddhi what i mean dravya shuddhi is the shuddhi of the money you gain jnana shuddhi is the in depth knowledge that you achieve in your shastra plus added on with whatever is possible it is not about going for comparisons or correlations with the western allopathic textbook but it is about going again and again with the very basic philosophy and logic of ayurveda ുംസ്ത്രീയം kanadam paninīyam ca sarva shastropakāragam so only when you have a thorough footing in the basic philosophy and logic of our system then only you can make improvisations that is really really important so be pure in your intentions and work as hard as possible in order to succeed i would say preach not what you practice not preach not what you practice not practice ayurveda in your own life no excuse 
प्रूव दैट यू आर अ डिफरेंट पर्सन अधीदी बोध आचरण प्रचरण देन ओनली यू विल बिकम ए वैद्य अधीदी एंड बोध इज ऑल अबाउट द लर्निंग एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कांसेप्ट्स वेयर एज आचरण मींस फट द फर्स्ट यू हैव टू पुट दिस इन योर ओन लाइफ देन ओनली कम्स प्रचरण so preach not what you practice not very important because that is a class that is actually how you are going to be successful in the society you live then be committed be committed if you go through the features of a good vaidya in many context let it be uh, ashtanga sangraham or let it be susruta samhita you will find that there will be untiring uncompromising effort required to master the art of vaidya there is no excuse in it there is that is the area where you need very strong sadhaka pitta very strong sadhaka pitta only with the support of sadhaka pitta you can stick on to your words you can stick on to your commitments so try to ignite your sadhaka pittam to the best level possible with which success can be guaranteed everybody knows who this fellow is steve jobs he is giving one comment about time management management of time we generally vaidyas tend to waste a lot of time without any creativity without any positivity we tend to be lazy very sorry to say that in an open platform so here steve jobs reminds us about the most precious resource we all have that is time stick on to a proper time avoid gossiping don't waste your time running here and there be focused so time management is another thing again perseverance perseverance that is uh, the continuous effort without any sort of laziness that you can put into your focus your aim that can be named as perseverance so here again one more quote from jobs i am not going to read it aloud but this is an important point i hope everybody knows this screenshot this particular uh, photograph from a very famous film of 2010 called karate kid everybody knows that the famous jackie chan film in which the boy called dre parker actually his name is jaden smith and uh, jackie chan known the character is known as mr han this particular shot where the master the jackie chan is giving the advice that everything should be done with an attitude and everything is kung fu everything is kung fu whatever you do in your life in a day from morning till night even during sleep that is kung fu it is not a separate training so that attitude makes the man no doubt and women so we have to be very particular about that is why i put this particular photograph what we have to do is we have to learn with that attitude and make sure that everything is ayurveda everything is ayurveda if the way in which you walk the way in which you sit you sleep you eat you learn whatever it is everything is ayurveda so keep that attitude as far as practice is concerned i already mentioned that stick on to the basics there is nothing which is other than basics there is one saying no basics no ayurveda k n o w no basics no ayurveda then no basics no ayurveda n o 
no basics no ayurveda so stick on to the basics to the best level possible my teacher my guru used to tell me that you should read at least two chapters of ashtanga hridayam every day every day two chapters of ashtanga hridayam every day i try to stick on to that commitment to the best in the best level possible i at least browse through this uh, ashtanga hridayam every day everybody we will be knowing this photograph the famous martial artist film star bruce lee he is making some statement about practice practice makes perfection the quote we ought to have given is very very famous bruce lee comments i don't fear the man who has practiced 10000 kicks i fear the man who practiced one kick 10000 times because practice refines your application again and again and if you master one art 10000 times i think you are going to be the real real master of that art patmashri why uh, dr k rajagopal was an ardent fan of ashtanga hridaya of course he was well versed in almost all textbooks no doubt and uh, one of his passionate chapters in ashtanga hridaya was panduroga chikilsita and he used to tell that panduroga chikilsitam will open up the vaidya to the treatment modalities of a huge number of disease conditions that we face in modern times but don't expect any shortcuts you have to read panduroga chikilsitam in ashtanga hridayam at least 80 times at least 80 times you read like our bruce lee says i don't fear the man who has practiced 10000 kicks but i fear the man who has practiced one kick 10000 times another important point always use common sense always use common sense walter commented common sense is not so common unfortunately but there is no secrets in shastra there is no secrets in any of the applications of ayurveda but the problem is that don't look into the scriptures for copying them as such there can be many situations where improvisations are required shastrarthan vyabino vidyad prayogam stva eka deshigan prayogas are local whereas shastrarthas are universal vagbhada has never ever sat in your consultation room and he has never ever treated one particular patient x whom you are going to treat so when you are treating a patient you have to put your common sense into it when you are making a change in a yoga you have to put your common sense into it so common sense is an unavoidable thing factor in success another important thing is be sharp in your observations we are very very casual in this aspect we don't observe things properly we are preoccupied by many many other interests see we are always prejudiced in our clinical practice when somebody is coming to the room and start telling about one or two complaints we come to a conclusion that this is vadashonitam or this is raktapittam or this is kasam if it is even if we don't mind it is a vadakasam or pittakasam 
so that way we are preoccupied we don't observe we don't observe the situation completely it is very very important that is why i put the photograph of sherlock holmes because observation is the way to come to logical conclusions nothing will be irrelevant for a watchful eye so be sharp in your observations i will put it in two ways two buzzwords number one is exactness number two is completeness by exactness i mean what you see what you search in your mind as learned from the classics should be exactly the same then only you can make logical conclusions from what you have learned when you see a patient with a particular feature say for example kasam this kasam can have hetu bhedad pradighad bhedah vayo sarambhasa so there can be pradighad bhedam and accordingly there can be different types of presentations so you are not supposed to make a loose observation vague observation that this particular guy is having kasam come to the exactness of kasam come to the exactness of kasam is it a sakabhagasam or tanukabhagasam or a akabhagasam if it is sakabhagasam is it pidakabham or shvedakabham or saraktakabham if it is kasam is it associated with some ghurghura shwasam or kasam alone is it a dry kasam or a wet type of kasam is the kasam is associated with jwaram or without jwaram so they, there should be the primary focus on exactness bhramam we say bhramam this, this bhramam can be sharira bhramam shiro bhramam sometimes the patient comes to you and tells you that i am on anti epileptic drugs the moment he says that i am on anti epileptic drugs you yourself dip into the false image the false conclusion that this patient is having apasmaram that need not be the case you may find that many patients are on anti epileptic drug sometimes they may be with changes in the brain with changes in the eeg many a times most of the guys who are taking anti epileptics will not be having any problem with their mastishkam or in the eeg so i think you should have exact understanding what the situation is sometimes it can be just a madam sometimes it can be murchayam sometimes of course that can be uh, apasmaram as well so don't jump into conclusions understand what exactly the problem is another buzzword is completeness completeness means collect as much clinical features as as possible and put them on your clinical table arrange them on your clinical table don't rush into conclusions because as i told earlier when kasam is with the jwaram possibility a with the kasam jwaram and adisaram kasam jwaram hridaham kasam jwaram shwasam so take the complete picture of the presentation have a complete understanding of the situation so for all these things you have to be very very specific in observations 
otherwise you will be very easily fooled by the patients another important trait that a successful vaidya should have is discipline discipline is always extolled as the bridge between goals and accomplishment it is true without a discipline nothing is going to come out in, in spite of the best of the effort that you are going to put you may be working hard you may be putting all your effort but if you are not disciplined nothing is going to come out of it then be passionate be passionate we know i when i talk to students when i talk to practitioners when i talk to many other people related to ayurveda they are not passionate many a times they came into this field unknowingly they never ever engaged in a very cordial relationship with the shastra they keep on cursing as if they were trapped so how can you be passionate with it and how can you succeed in a trade in which you are not passionate about so be passionate be passionate to the young students maybe the first year second year i always used to tell them if you are still failing to come to some sort of a passion with the shastra please quit now itself you have already lost one year or maximum two year if you continue without passion you are going to fight with the system curse yourself blame yourself all throughout your life as if you get married with a person whom you hate the maximum the most so be passionate with the trade then be original in thinking and approach i have already mentioned in a different way about the originality is required improvisation is another way of original thinking actually because from what we have reached you are making an offshoot you are going to make an extension while you are making an original twist or turn so be original in your thinking be original in your approach because the ways to failure and success they are different if you are not keen about these sign boards you will not improvise yourself and you may end up in failure and you may think that it is success don't never ever fear failures but don't follow fate paths we can see i can give you n number of examples for this again come to a clinical a consultation room a patient comes to you he is going to narrate his story i had a problem i was having severe recurrent pain in my stomach in my abdomen and i have consulted dr x in that hospital he did all these things then why he did all these things then said he did all these things everybody was having a very common a right opinion unanimous opinion that i am having some problem with my pancreas and they put all their efforts but it did not succeed i am having the same type of pain even now they say that it is a chronic pancreatitis fine so the next moment our vaidya start thinking what can be done for chronic pancreatitis the case was already seen by three gastroenterologists who concluded that it is chronic pancreatitis they treated it well and they did not succeed still before making a proper enquiry into the situation before even making a proper yogi pariksha we also follow the same path a failed path that are what i will do for chronic pancreatitis so failure can be there 
that can be taken as the beginning of a success but don't follow failed paths deliberately another point is sense the changes in in situations situations are changing very frequently that is why avasthan vidhanam eva chikitsa acharya tells us tandri kuriyan natukramam don't think that x is important y is important z is important in treatment avasthan vidhanam eva pradhanam because the demands and patterns of the situations change constantly so be very careful to observe and sense the changes and act accordingly in this picture given you find that the person is starting one point and ends up on the other in between there are n number of situations if you take a photograph you can take different photographs through that trajectory all will be different so if you have to intervene in the sequence you have to understand where you are going to intervene that is very important otherwise failure is guaranteed be up to date be up to date again situation will be changing situation will be evolving see when we started with covid 19 we were thinking that it is going to be a dry cough then fatality started occurring people started dying then more things were evolving it was not just a dry cough see the way in which the symptomatology of covid 19 changed now today anything can be a feature of covid 19 anything can be a feature of covid 19 so from last week of december 2019 to the last week of august 2020 many things have changed and if you still feel that the covid 19 is that old covid 19 what it was in december 2019 you are wrong be up to date see how things are changing and plan accordingly that is essential for success think big think big because mediocrity is a curse the way in which white, most of the vaidyas talk about their condition you ask them how are you malayalathil anengile ah kolappam illa so they expect some kolappam all the time and they are surprised that today ended up without any kolappam that should not be the case use great vocabularies amazing vocabularies how are you i'm great i'm in cloud nine fine think big place yourself on the top then mediocrity is a curse don't run after it next be adventurous be adventurous success is for those who are adventurous people because world is not going to end even if you fail so be adventurous no doubt at all find out new pathways venture into it and succeed don't run after very conventional pathways don't run after very conventional targets i am insisting on this point repeatedly because most of our graduates girls coming out of the colleges are sitting idle they don't practice most of our the lion's share of our manpower is wasted because they don't want to succeed they want to settle they want to settle because settling and succeeding they are different so define do you want to do you want to have success or just get settled if you want success be adventurous with it no other options this is another point we are very very reluctant to work in teams 
actually we do not know even how to build teams like the indian cricket team of the 80s or even 90s i would say everybody will be stars but as a team we will fail the opening batsman may take all the shots and will keep himself not out till the last ball but he will have scored only 35 runs he makes sure that he is not getting out never knows how to build teams this is exact what is happening in most of the situations with ayurvedic people they don't build teams but without building teams that is why we don't have big institutions that is why we don't have active sharing of experiences that is why we don't have great success so insist on building teams next is communication when i was the secretary of another organization and while i was giving lectures to the small small units of the association i used to tell them as we learn the three ashanas in the textbook tisraishaniyam i told them we also should have more modern ashanas it is not ashanas but ashans and the first one was communication communication education and association these three ashans are the need additionally to the ashanas what we learn in charaka samhita ashana trayam is excellent for modern vaidyas we should have the skills to communicate communicate with counterparts from our own community and other systems with confidence and discuss situations whether it is a case whether it is a referral whether it is something else with authenticity explore to the maximum that you can then only you start leaving the situation don't try to leave it in the day one or second one itself explore it to the maximum with authenticity then discuss communicate and collaborate with whichever areas are practically feasible feel confident and proud to use the terms and definitions of your own school we always feel embarrassed to say vadam pittam or kabham in a stage in a forum where nobody may be there with ayurvedic background but feel confident because you are representing a unique system you are representing a something like a super speciality which has its own terminology its own technical logic technical background so be proud but don't be arrogant don't be arrogant but be confident to use your own terms and definitions whenever it is possible this is another point don't follow money of course we all need money money makes many things no doubt yasya asti vittam sa nara kulinah sa pandita sa shrudavan gunatnyah sa eva vakta sa ja darshaniya sarve guna kanjana asrayandi everybody knows that but don't make it your target karmanye vadhikaraste put your heart and soul into your commitment your work your passion your practice money will follow you chase your dreams money will follow no doubt saraswati saraswati and lakshmi there is one great painting by raja ravi varma in which he uh put this lotus as the seat of lakshmi and the hard rock as the seat of saraswati ideally it is not like that or by default it is not like that so there was a question why it is so the answer was lotus is very beautiful no doubt but it is not a firm seating at any time it can sink so that is the seat of 
Lakshmi. Whereas Saraswati, Saraswati is sitting on a very hard rock, very firm. It is not shaky. Same is the case. Put your efforts to for for uh, worshipping this Saraswati, not Lakshmi. But wherever there is Saraswati, Lakshmi will come. So chase your dreams. Money will follow. Don't run after money. Another point is imagination. Be imaginative. As far as Vaidya is concerned, his main trade itself is imagination. Whatever he is speaking about is imagination. Vada, Pitta, Kabha, fine. All these are imaginations, imaginative principles which you cannot see directly. But the way in which you imagine, the clarity with which you are imagining these principles, the more clear, the more lucid your applications will be. So, imagination plays a key role. See, the most important part as far as the trade of a Vaidya is concerned is to know what the samprapti of a yoga is. What is samprapti? I always used to tell all the other things what we see in the yogi, nidanam, pragrubam, rubam, upasayam, is every Everything is happening in the rogi. But samrapti, samrapti is not happening in the rogi. Samrapti is happening in the imagination of the Vaidya. Samrapti is happening in the imagination of the Vaidya. So the more imaginative you are, the more lucid your capacity to imagine, you are becoming a better Vaidya, a successful Vaidya. Most of the successful Vaidyas of our earlier times were known by the name Kaviraj because they were excellent in their imaginative capacity. So be imaginative.